Hello, and welcome back to Dell Technologies Making AI Real with Data on theCUBE. I'm Rob Stretchy, Managing Director with theCUBE Research. In this segment, we will unpack storage architectures and why they're so critical to AI. This should be common sense, and people should understand this because data really powers AI. To help me unpack this, I'm joined by Gita Vigala, who's the Senior Director of Product Management Unstructured Data Solutions at Dell Technologies, and Premal Savla, who is the Senior Director of Product Management Deep Learning Systems at NVIDIA. I don't know that I could have two better people to be on with me to help me unpack this because I think that really AI, I, obviously AI is such a buzzword, but you're two preeminent providers of the infrastructure that really powers AI. So let's kind of jump into it. Customers really have capitalized on waves of innovation over the years, and obviously AI is a big one. How are customers really taking advantage of AI? And we'll start with you, Gita. Yeah, it's interesting that you say that, Rob. It's, it's a big buzzword, but it's also a market that's in flux and everyone's trying to figure out what it means to them. And what we're seeing, and I think the, the benefit of Dell is it's such a broad company and we get to see all sorts of verticals, horizontals, speak to people in C-suite all the way down to boots on the ground. I mean, we're getting to get a full experience. And the one thing we're taking away that there really isn't a one size fits all. Everyone's doing it a slightly different way. They're trying to solve a slightly different problem. It's not just product, it's people, process. It's an entire evolution of what I think we've seen in our markets before. So it's a technological evolution for sure, but it's also how people are thinking about it, their risk aversity, the philosophy of the company and the enterprise. And net net, uh, I mean, what we're seeing is there's just, there's not a blueprint. There's not one blueprint that fits for everybody. And what Dell's been really looking to do is one, provide some of that um, strategic advisory for when enterprises or customers need it to help kind of pick apart what are your true goals and how do we help you get there? And is it a people process technolo technology challenge? How, how do we overcome those? But I think that's the biggest one. You know, so we've been focused big on helping provide those advisory services and then really designing for flexibility because we want to be able to build the Lego blocks that can fit into the various environments and then scale those as many of these enterprises go from test dev to production and, and that becomes a whole different world, especially when you think about data. I, I live in storage, so data stewardship is a big part of what I think about and that, that entirely changes the game for them. So just to add to what Gita said, right? Uh, one of the key things is not on the advisory side, a lot of it is education, mm -hmm. right? Uh, we have to continue to uh, talk to customers about the different aspects of the technology. What is AI? What? How does storage play with AI as we move forward? And a lot of, uh, as every new technology has come into market, there's a place for education that comes in the front. That's right. And that's a big part of getting that technology adopted and making it easier to consume. So that's a big portion of the conversations that we have with our customers around AI and talking about all the different teams within a company and how they are approaching these different projects is critical. Mm -hmm. They have a certain way they have been doing things, but AI makes you think differently. The amount of processing power that it requires, the amount of data that is consumed is significant. So they have to think through is how this is going to be used in as they move forward with whatever initiatives that they are taking with AI in their, in their particular company or in their organization. Yeah. Yeah, no, I think it's really important, and I think that is exactly it, is you got to have kind of a, a path, a good path, right, right. from that. And, and Gita, kind of help us understand how Dell is really changing the game around AI with the storage portfolio and how you're changing your storage portfolio to really uh, address this. Yeah, yeah, I, I think as Pramal talked about the education, it's, it's a really valid point because what we've done is we've, we've learned along with the market and so there was a big sort of focus on a need for compute and you know, really looking at, it was kind of a piecemeal, like I need all these different things to come together for my environment. It often started with a conversation on compute and then it went to networking and NVIDIA has obviously been a huge part of helping the market understand how to use some of this technology. And as that's come down to storage, we've been sort of looking out to see are, are customers thinking about this as a whole new, a new world, like a promised land, or is it an evolution of where they've been? Because storage has been around for a long time. And when I think about AI or generative AI now, there's been a long history in, in AI with machine learning and deep learning, et cetera. So one thing that we're seeing is really hearing about 
storage that needs to fit into this ecosystem. So it's not a standalone piece, it's the solution design, and that's why our partnership with NVIDIA and the AI factory has been such a big part of that, to bring those components together and then use storage as a building block that seamlessly integrates. So things like interoperability, simplicity, hitting some of the, um, you'll hear me say data sovereignty, data lineage a lot, because maintaining the data and its integrity so that you can use that data, but in a trustworthy way as part of this ecosystem is really what we're seeing starting to resonate. Gita, you, you, you hit a, a, you know, an important point, which was you know, power scale has been around for a bit and it has a lot of data in there. Yep. A lot of people are using that data for RAG and other mm -hmm. different types of AI. What are some of the features that people are really excited about that are in PowerScale now and coming? Yeah, there's, um, it's all over the map, to be honest, Rob, and it really depends. When I said earlier that the, the vertical or the use case or where the, where the customer is in their journey is really what kind of targets what features they need at any given time. The, the ones that are really resonating, and I'll give you an example from a customer I met at the beginning of this week, they're a long time, um, they've done a lot of machine learning, so a large financial services organization. They were doing a lot of fraud analytics, um, anomaly detection, and now they want to extend that into generative AI where they've got an understanding of anomalies, but they want to make that queryable through some sort of chatbot. And so that evolution is where we're seeing some of the traditional paradigms of scale, simplicity, because as Pramal said, it's, it's a lot of data. Um, and when you're trying to manage a lot of data, it can get complicated very quickly. And so just massive amounts of scale out data, easy to access, even things like right placing that data. So PowerScale has had a long history around right placing data based on tiers. And the idea behind that is data has value at any given time. And so you want to align that with your cost and your budget and your TCO. Um, your technology is great, but to make it real, there is an evolution of how that gets productized. So we're seeing things um, around performance, capacity, but also metadata and how do you get context and insights on some of that data to define what we're starting to get behind is sort of a, a data set concept now, which is the idea of you've got a lot of data, but to really do any AI processing, you need to be able to understand what data in there do I want to siphon out and put closest to my GPU so that I'm not leaving money on the table and start to elevate through that, through that pipeline. Pramal, you know, NVIDIA and Dell are really a powerhouse combination when it comes to this. Can you talk to this partnership in a little bit more depth? Yeah, so uh, when we started the AI journey or when I started the AI journey with NVIDIA, one of the key things that we looked at is how do you make it easy? How do you make the technology easy for the enterprise to deploy and consume. And one of the things that we did at NVIDIA was to create the reference architecture with the NVIDIA DGX Superpod. And as part of that design, what we did is we enabled customers to take building blocks, as Geeta talked earlier. How do you make it modular enough so that you can consume it? As you grow, as, you, as the number of organizations that are playing uh, with different models and AIs in your uh, in, your, in your enterprise, you want to be able to scale it easily. And you have to think differently from what it was being done in the past. And what Dell brought to the table was a lot of, a lot of capabilities around what it's already been doing uh, with, the, with the enterprise. And that allowed us to partner together to create a solution with Ethernet-enabled uh, storage so that we can take it to our customers. A lot of times when new technology comes, we want to provide it in nice building blocks so that people can take it and use it and build from there. And, and as they grow, we bring in more capabilities and that's what we did with Dell. So that's where we are right now. So we announced uh, Dell uh, PowerScale with NVIDIA DGX Superpod. Now it's fully available. We are very excited by that. Uh, the team has been excellent. Uh, one of the other things that we want to do is we want to test this in-house so that we don't do it at a customer. So our teams have been working together for uh, quite a few months to figure out is all the details that are required to get a performance system out there. Mm -hmm. And the way to think about it is uh, NVIDIA DJX Superpod is a Ferrari. And to keep that Ferrari running on the racetrack, you need that data and that power and, and that's what the power scale brings for us. I want to thank you both for coming on board. I think this was a great segment that people can really take tangible lessons from and uh, you know, apply them. So thank you for coming on board. Thank, thank you, you, Rob. Thank you, Rob. And thank you. Stay tuned for more Making AI Real with Data on theCUBE, the leader in high-tech enterprise news and analysis.